The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Good. So let us start. So, so let me first quickly remind you what we did in the last lecture. So we first talk about the, um, say, talk about general observables in gauge series. So we are interested in, say, correlation functions. of gauging wiring operators. In particular, we will be uh, uh, focused on local operators. Local operators. So we um, say, for example, so the local operator can be also be separated into, say, the single trace operator. Uh, or the yeah, single trace operator. So n just label different operators. Or say the, the double trace operator, sometimes in order to avoid confusion, we put some dots. So it means th these two operators should be considered grouped together, and then evaluate, then evaluate it at some space-time point. Say this would be a double trace operator. And uh, or maybe the higher ones, okay. And uh, also we found that typical correlation function. Say if I look at endpoint function, endpoint connected green function of single trace operators, then the scale with n as the following. Again, you sum over all the H, which is the topology of your diagrams, and then to the power n to the minus n, n is the number of the, the endpoint functions, the minus 2h, then say some, some function fn, which can depend on the coupling constants, and also will depend on x1, x2, xn, etc. Okay? So, th so this will start as leading order which n two minus n, which come from the planar diagram. And then the next order just n to the minus n, so this will be the torus diagram. The diagram you can put on the torus. Or genus two diagrams, okay? So we also discussed that this behavior has important physical implications. We talked about two implications. We talked about two implications. You say that kind of independence means that in the large n limit, say in the angle to infinity limit, we can essentially treat the action of the single particle, or a, a, a single trace operator, say on the vacuum, as, a single, as generating a single particle state. Say uh, we often call this as global state. Global, okay. So this single particle state, they don't have to appear really as say a symptotic state uh, in your scattering, etc. Uh, I just say the, the behavior of such states behave like uh, uh, single particles. 
And then if you act on the double trace operator on the zero, then that gives you the, the two particle state. And etc. And the three uh, and the triple trace operator give you the three particle state, etc. Okay. So, so so this is one aspect. And the uh, and the second aspect is that if say if there's some single trace operator whose expectation value is non-zero, then the fluctuation. Are suppressed. Okay, so for example, if you look at the ratio, if you look at the ratio of the variance, so O square, the connected part of the O square, is essentially the variance of the uh, of this guy, and divided by expectation value itself then scales 1 over, one over m because of that behavior, and this goes to 0, okay, in the large n uh, as n goes to infinity. So that means the fluctuations are suppressed. So any questions regarding this? Good, okay. So now let's talk about the third aspect of it, the third implication. So now suppose we interpret suppose we interpret this endpoint function. A disconnected endpoint function. Say uh, we, which I can symbolically write as, say some kind of blob. Then you have any external legs. Say one, two, three, n minus one n. Okay. So so each night each night means the external operator insertions. So if we interpret this as some kind of scattering amplitude, as some kind of scattering amplitude, say so as generates some kind of scattering amplitude over the n globals, Globals, then you can show because of this behavior, you can show because of this n scaling, and then again to leading order, in the n goes to infinity limit, the scatterings. Are classical. But classical means you said it only involves only involve three level scatterings. So now I'm going to show this. Uh, uh, this is the uh, conclusion. So now I'm going to uh, uh, justify this statement. So before I start justifying this statement, do you have any questions? Good. 
So, so let me just make a few uh, um, remark. So first, so let's look at the simplest case, which is the three-point function. So the three-point function can be considered just as effective vertex. Say, so can be considered as an effective vertex of three particles intact with each other? Say one, say one group ball split into two group balls, et cetera. Okay. So this, from that definition, is scales as one over n. Okay, this scale is one of n. So if we treat it as a basic vertex, so, so if we treat it as a basic vertex, so if we uh, suppose we treat it, suppose we treat we treat it as a basic vertex. With coupling G, so G is one over n. Okay. Then, from simple, then it's easy to see. Then, then three level amplitudes. For n particle scattering, n particle scatterings are precisely scales as g to the n minus two, which is n to the power minus two minus n, and this is precisely we see uh, for the leading scaling here. Okay. So is this fact obvious to you that the tree level scattering for n particles with the with, with basic vertex given by G will scale like this? Uh, sorry, why is it proportional to G? Because each uh, each this in the double line notation, each line contributes to a, like a G square. So. Uh, how that G comes from? No, which G you are talking about? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, uh, uh, maybe let me call it lambda. It, 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 it's a different G. It, 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 it's a different. Yeah, let me call it uh, um, kappa. Or let me call it um, G tilde. <laughs> yeah, it's not the same. It's not the same G as before. This is just something I, uh, I denote. I just call it some kind of effective coupling. Yeah. Yeah. Just imagine you have a process whose basic intacting vertex is G tilde, and G tilde is of order one of n, and then the then the tree level scattering for n particle uh, will depend on this coupling to be G tilde to the n uh, minus two. Okay. Is this uh, uh, clear to you? Yeah. You can just draw a tree diagram. You can see it immediately. Okay. So, uh, uh, so this is consistent. So, so, so this behavior is consistent to to interpret that as a tree. Uh, but you don't actually have to assume the uh, uh, the basic the three point vertex. So you can also say. You can also include. Say so higher order vertices. But your vertices which you include should be consistent with this scaling. Okay? Say so suppose if you want to include a four particle vertices, and then this should scale as g tilde square, which is n to the minus two, because the four point connective function should scale as a, 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 a minus two. And similarly, if you have a five point vertex, then it should scale as g tilde to the cube, which is n to the minus 3, because the 5 point function should scale as n minus 3. Okay? 
So you can also add such higher order vertices as far as you are consistent with this Nigerian scaling. So you, then you can easily convince yourself that even including such higher order vertices uh, that does not change this conclusion. Does not change this conclusion uh, uh, that the energy level amplitude uh, again for uh, for n particles will scales like this. Okay. Uh, will not change that conclusion. So this is second statement. And these two statements just to give you a heuristic way to see that, the, uh, that, that this kind of scaling can be generated, indeed generated by tree level uh, scatterings. So now I'm going to prove, so now I'm going to prove that in the large N limit to leading order, in N, in any such kind of correlation functions, there are no more than one. There's no more. There's, there are only maybe. Uh, 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 let me just say it easier. There are only one particle in the media states. Okay. I'm going to show this. Um, so let's consider, say, a, 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 a three part. Uh, uh, so by one particle, I, I always mean one particle in this sense. Okay, so one particle in this sense. So I will do it a little bit heuristically, uh, uh, not very precise, but I think it's uh, it's uh, it's rigorous, but it's not. Uh, but I will not write the precise. Uh, um, uh, yeah, we will not write rigorous formulas. So so let's consider, uh, just as an example, consider uh, the three-point scattering, three-point functions. Say so I have three operators. Uh, uh, I look at this connected a uh, 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 green function. Okay. So now, in those places, we can, in principle, insert a complete set of states. Okay, and those can be considered as the intermediate, uh, intermediate state contribute to this process. Say, if I consider a scattering process, and then uh, and then I can insert the uh, a complete set of states here, and those states which gives a non-trivial contribution can be considered as the uh, contribution from some intermediate states. Okay. And uh, so, so for example, let me I introduce a single particle state here. Say, say this O1, O2, O3. Say suppose I insert a complete set of, so I insert, insert the one here. So this one will uh, 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 include the sum of all possible single particle states. And uh, also include also for two particle state. Okay. And look at the connected green function. Okay. Yeah, just heuristically, when I insert the complete set of states, I can insert all of uh, uh, like that. 
So now, now let's look at the scaling. So this guy, according to our general behavior, should scale also as 1 over n. OK? So this guy is indeed scaled as 1. So two-point function scales as 1 n to the power 0. And then this guy, and then this guy scales as n to the power minus 1. So, so this term is OK. So insertion of the single particle state is OK. But now, this will give you a higher order contribution, because this scales as n equal to minus 1. And this scale as n equal to minus 2. So all together, this co contributes to n to the minus 3. Okay, so, so the contribution of the two particle state then will be suppressed compared to the contribution of the single particle state. And similarly, with higher, uh, 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 even higher, uh, 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 even more particle states. Okay. So, so if I draw a diagram, this process is like the following. You said I can start with one, and this one can can say turn into an i through a two-point function, and then this i can go to two and three. OK? So this is a tree level process. And this is like the following. Uh, so this is a two particle state. So, uh, so this, if I draw a diagram, would be like if I start with 1. And then this 1 can split into ij. And then, then this ij combine into 2, 3. OK? So this is like a one loop process. OK? And this we see is n to the minus 3. And this is indeed just n to the minus 1. So this is suppressed compared to that. So, so this is a direct way to say that in this kind of, uh, 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 in this kind of uh, to leading order, indeed, there can only three level processes. You can never have this kind of loops. Because whenever you have a loop, then corresponding, you must have a multi-particle, uh, you must have multi-particle intermediate states. And then they are suppressed by large n. Is it clear? So, so this tells you that all loops are suppressed. And so, so A, B, C together, so this A, B, C together then justify the statement that to leading order, this, scat uh, 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 this scattering amplitude involving only tree level. When you have only a tree level scattering, then this is like a classical uh, a story. Uh, uh, only loop, so as you learned in, in quantum field theory, the loops uh, is the, uh, can be considered as quantum fluctuations. And if you only have trees, it's essentially just a classical process. So when you solve the classical equation motion, and what do you get? It's the tree level processes. OK? Yes? What is the number of operators scales like n? Hmm? What is the number of operators in the sum right. scales like oh, well, uh, 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 That's a very good question. And essentially, the, by definition, such operator only scales. Uh, 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 essentially, by definition, those operate, uh, 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 such kind of so called single trace operators, and they. Uh, the scales at order one. Uh, uh, yeah, there's no. Um, yeah, just the way you can make such single trace operator is not proportional to n. Yeah. Questions? What is I mean, each of these terms individually small, but when you take some make summation over them? Yeah, yeah, that's the question was just asked. Um, so. So those operators, if you count them, uh, uh, the number of single trace operators you can construct is, uh, is independent of n. Uh, and so, so when you suppress them by n, and there's nothing you can compensate them. Uh, uh, in principle, yeah, uh, uh, there's nothing you can compensate them. So yeah. So like how many, yeah, how many operators that are like um, O, I, O, J? Can you construct it? Like, what is the magnitude? Oh, it's infinite number of them. Right. It's infinite number of them, but the key 
is the infinite compare. It's a factor of infinite. It, yeah, it's infinite. It's, it's infinite, but compared to the large n limit, it's still order one. <laughs> it's infinite. It's infinite, but it's order n to the power zero. It's at the n to the power 0. Okay. And uh, so, but they will be suppressed by physical, uh, 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 they will be suppressed by physical process. Say, for example, say this operator, say I have some dimension, say, uh, say this operator, say, suppose this particle 1 have some energy. And, uh, and the, uh, 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 a particle has some energy. And then the process of this generator, this 2, and when, they are, then when, uh, when their energy becomes very large, then it's suppressed. And, uh, and, uh, and you have this kind of physical suppression. Of course, if you include all, all energies, there are infinite number of them. But in effect, if you can, sure. if you can see the uh, yeah, energy conservation, this kind of thing, then essentially there's a finite number of contributors. Okay. Yeah, but the key is that this is order n to the power 0. Just uh, maybe one more thing. Yeah. What if it uh, includes the loop closed by itself. Yeah. Like a like a closed forming loop in QED. I mean it doesn't need to involve multiple state. It can just uh, bend and uh, then No 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 loop always involves particle particle state. Say so, uh, any loop when you cross it there's always two states. We don't need to cross it at the end. I mean like a, a <laughs> so, uh, sorry I don't quite understand. Any loop any loop, by definition, when you cross it, there's always two points. Uh, and then that means this is more than one particle. Uh, just something like this. Uh, we don't uh, cross any. No, 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 no. You cross here, you still have two particles. Right. Oh, OK. Yeah, you cut at any time, there's still two particles. Yeah. Uh, OK, let's summarize. So now let's combine one, two, three. So we can combine 1, 2, 3. So this tells us, so this 1, 2, 3 tells us at leading order in RJ expansion, we have a theory, a classical theory. We essentially just have a class. We have a classical theory of globals. You just have a bunch of particles, and they interact classically. Uh, there's no quantum fluctuations, and with interactions, among globals, among them, given by. Some effective coupling which I call G tilde, which scales at one over n. Okay, scales at one over n. So, so let me just elaborate this statement a little bit more. So this can be considered as say when we take a gauge theory, say for example Yang Mills theory, say QCD, you take angle to infinity limit. And you take h bar finite. So by definition, when we talk about this theory, h bar is always finite. But in the n equal to infinity limit, this is equivalent to a global theory. With h bar tilde goes to 0. Okay, So you get a classical theory. And with the effective uh, 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 h, uh, 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 h by tilde, which is controlled essentially by 1 over n, goes to 0. OK. So, so here you can do perturbative expansion 1 over n. So this is just a leading order. Here you can do perturbative expansion in 1 over n. 
So in this side, it's like some kind of semi-classical expansion. in this h tilde, which is, of course, should be scaled as 1 over n. OK? So, so on this side, when h bar, goes, uh, h bar tilde goes 0, of course, you have a classical theory. But then you can do, uh, do expansion h tilde. And so this is what we normally call the, uh, a semi-classical expansion. OK? So, so, the, so the large n expansion then translate into some semi-classical uh, expansion when you translate into this global language. And we will now, so is this clear? Uh, 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 yeah, this is a little bit small corner. Is it, uh, uh, is it readable? Yeah, uh, 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 this is a very important statement. Maybe I should rewrite it. Um, yeah, let me just re rewrite it. So, perturbative expansion. perturbation in n, in 1 over n, so this is equal to semi-classical classical expansion in h bar tilde, which scales 1 over n. And we will now show that these guys, this global theory, and this semi-classical expansion is actually a string theory. OK? Uh, now we are not show that. I say I will motivate that. Uh, I say that's a string theory. So, uh, so before I go that, uh, do you have any questions? Yes? Just to clarify, I mean, you may I mean, doesn't the sort of second statement, like the fact that perturbation 1 over n corresponds to some classical expansion in h bar tilde, like, isn't that just a, more, a generalization of the thing you just wrote? Like, you really, it's the same statement. Yeah, it's the same statement. Okay, no, no, no. These two statements, they are, they are not equivalent. This is talking about this particular limit. Okay. This is talking about this particular limit. And this tells you uh, what happens. We will relax this limit by including the exp including finite n fact by one over n expansion. Yeah. And, uh, and the, to make this identification, so this by itself does not imply that. It goes the other way does, right? Yeah, it goes the other way does. Uh, so this is a stronger statement. Right, OK. Yeah. Uh, 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 and this statement is supported by just looking at the leading order behavior. But if you want to look at, but if you want to look at this behavior, and then you look at, then you, then you need to look at the subleading term in one of n. Say for example here, then you see the fluctuation is controlled by one of n. It's like your fluctuation is controlled by h bar, and uh, and similarly here, then then when you include one of n effect, then you will see single particle. Now, uh, and, the multi uh, and the two particle, multi particle, they can mix together due to fluctuations. And again, that amplitude is controlled by 1 over n, et cetera. Yeah, I just say this statement is, uh, is stronger. You need to look at the sub leading corrections uh, carefully and to see that fits into a, a, a H bar pattern. Great. Yeah. Yes? So instead of this operators, all we consider regular creation, destruction operators. Do we still come to the conclusion that all the group diagrams are expressed? Yeah, uh, uh, that's a good point. Uh, so in essence, you can imagine this o, OI. Each OI defines this point 1 is precisely this statement. You said you can imagine each OI defines a creation, defines an independent creation and annihilation operator. Uh, 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 yeah. Even in the original theory, we still have suppression of group diagrams. Sorry? No, in the original theory, we're not. Only in the large n limit. So in the original theory, with like in large n limit, we do have suppression. 
No, you don't have a suppression of loop diagram in terms of the standard loops. You only have the suppression of the loop diagram in terms of those loops, in terms of loops of globals. But here we don't specify, like, don't put any restrictions on what are the operators O. So why can't we say just O i is just psi, psi i? No, no, no. O is gauge invariant operator. Uh, o is composite operator. O is some composite operator. So, so for example, in the in the Yamil theory, say one example is O can be trace f square. So if you look at the two-point function of O, then that's corresponding to two gluon propagators, two uh, gluon propagators, and so uh, uh, you have loops here. Uh, 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 but but this is not the loop in terms of the group balls here when we talk about loops. Yeah, so let me emphasize, all loops of group balls. Because here, so the key of this statement is that in the large n limit, and if you can see the, if our thing is gauge variant operators, then that's the uh, physics you should consider. And, uh, and you should not worry about the original stuff. And those they have loops, etc. They have finite h bar, et cetera. But in terms, of the, uh, in terms of those glue balls, then you have a classical theory. There's no loops. You only have two level scattering in the large end limit. Yes? Uh, so are we talking about uh, general like, gauge invariant operators or explicitly single trace operators? No, no, no. I have to talk about everything. OK. Uh, so I mean, like, the, the single, a single O operator is can be several traces. No, no, no. Single O is a single trace. No, right. single O is a single trace that's defined there. What about like non-trace gauge invariance operators? We don't consider them. <laughs> oh, you mean non-trace gauge invariant operator? Yeah. No, every gauge invariant operator always involves trace. Always? Yeah, sure. You will be a famous mathematician if you can construct a <laughs> something invariant which does not involve a trace. <laughs> yeah, construct something about the matrix. Yeah, use something, uh, construct something using matrices, which does not involve in traces. Yeah, uh, even if you do determinant, and determinant can still be written as traces. And uh, yeah, yeah, just everything can be written as traces. So determinant would just have, be, if you have a determinant operator, that can just be written as like a product of many. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Good, any other questions? Yes? To clarify, we've been talking about matrices. Yeah, here we are talking about only every field is matrix valued fields. Yeah, uh, uh, just every field is matrix valued field. Yeah, yes? Uh, I, I don't know, I just, uh, I thought there was more um, uh, invariant, invariant that you can construct out of a matrix. Um, like I was asking you the other day, um, basically it's, all of the, each one of the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial of a matrix. Yeah, they can, written, they can be written as traces. Yeah, they can be written as traces. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Actually, in case of QCD, we don't discuss quarks here. Yeah, yeah here we have the, uh, uh, not these quarks. And we are going to mention quarks uh, very briefly at the end. Yeah. Any other questions? Good, good. OK, so now let's talk about a little bit about string theory. Uh, maybe I will leave it there. Uh, leave that. Um, let me see where I leave that. Yeah, let me leave that. Oh, OK.
So first, I will talk a little bit about the strings. So first, let me remind you, Q, QFT, normally when we say a QFT, we say QFT is a series of particles. Or particles. Okay. So the standard approach to the QFT is that you write down a field theory Lagrangian, and then you quantize, etc. So this is normally called a, a second quantized. So the standard approach is called the second quantized approach. Second quantized approach, OK? But there also exists a first quantized approach. There also exists a first quantized approach. Hmm. There also exists a first quantized approach. You say you directly quantize, you just quantize a, qu a quantum motion. Say O for a particle or particles. Say O, say, say let's consider one particle. Say A particle in space time. Okay? So for example, if you can see the particle propagate in space time along some trajectory, so let's para uh, parameterize this trajectory, say using a parameter by tau, which label the point along the trajectory. And then, so this will give you a mapping. Say, say the trajectory will map out the trajectory. Yeah, uh, so this will map out the trajectory in space time, which can be written as a space time coordinate as a function of tau. Okay, so this so this parameterizes the ward nine of the particle. So this parameterizes the ward nine of the particle. And uh, to quantize the particle, the to quantize the particle, the simplest way is you imagine just sum over all possible paths of the particle. So essentially, we are doing a path integral. So essentially, we are doing a path integral. So you, you, you just integrate over all possible paths of a particle. And then this is essentially a quantum motion. Just quantum mechanically, you can fluctuate anyway. And then this particle, then this action for the particle, essentially, it just it's the, uh, the length. So suppose the particle have mass m, it's just the length of the particle, dl, along the trajectory. OK. And if you include interactions, then you, you have to include the trajectory with the particle can split. Say, uh, uh, say, say a line can split in two lines, etc. So this gives you interactions. OK? And this, and this you need to add by hand. Because the particle in principle can, because you can draw infinite ways a particle split into more particles, et cetera. So depending on your specific series, you need to specify, say, the interactions. So this you need to add by hand. So, so in principle, you can forget about the standard formulation of quantum field theory just to, to work with this particle theory. Just work with this particle theory. So the string theory is a generalization of this uh, first quantized approach. So string theory, as is currently formulated, 
is formulated in this uh, uh, first quantized approach. So you just quantize motion of string. Space time. Okay. So for simple, for example, so particle case you have a point particle string case you have a you have a closed loop. Uh, so imagine we have a closed string. Okay, you have a closed string. Uh, a string is a one-dimensional object. So let's consider closed string. Then, uh, then the string can be parameterized. So the string itself can be uh, uh, parameterized, say, by a parameter sigma along the, along the string. But then, then this string can move in the space-time. Then it will trace out some trajectory. Trace out some trajectory. Uh, trace out some trajectory. Um, so this gives rise to a watt sheet. So in the particle case, you have a watt 9. So, so in the string case, you have a watt sheet, which we normally call sigma. And then, then the sigma can be, again, written in terms of the space-time coordinates as a function of this tau and sigma. Okay. So now you have two coordinates to parameterize this watt sheet. So this is essentially a two-dimensional. Uh, so essentially, you have a two-dimensional surface in the space-time, embedded in space-time. And, uh, and the string theory just quantize, uh, it, it just consider the, uh, the motion of all such kind of surfaces. Yes? So in the case of a single particle, we have a point. Does this action actually reproduce? Like, what does it reproduce exactly? Like, does it, is it capable of reproducing all of quantum field theory using this formalism? Yeah, in principle, but it's not convenient depend on, yeah, for example, if you have a scalar particle, uh, yeah. this can certainly. Uh, uh, easily reproduce your free, free scalar field theory. Yeah. And if you want to reproduce a uh, five cube theory, then you need to add this kind of uh, splitting in your, when you, uh, 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 when you do your path integral, including the trajectories, you need to include this kind of trajectories, etc. Yeah, in principle, you can do it. It's not very convenient. I see. OK. Yeah. Probably interesting. Yes. H how do you add interactions by hand in that part? Oh, well, you just require. You just in the path integral, you in the uh, in the yeah here uh, you integrate over all such kind of paths, right? And then you have prescription. You say what kind of paths to include. And uh, and uh, and uh, and for example, if I have five cube kind of interaction, then you say we should include this kind of path. But by the case, it cannot be parameterized uh, as a tau, yes, because it has the branch. Yeah, yeah. Then you have to. Uh, 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 yeah, then you. Yeah, then there are technical complications in doing this, etc. Yeah. So, so one more question: Is string theory formulated in terms of second? Is it possible to formulate in terms of second quantization? Not, um, not right now. <laughs> so people have uh, people have written down classical string field theory, and in principle you can quantize it, but that's a very complicated thing. Interesting. I think nobody has successfully. Quantize even to write down the theory is very non-trivial. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, so the similarly to do quantization for string, you just look at the behavior. You just consider the path integral. So in principle, to do the quantize the string. You can again just imagine you sum over all possible watt sheet configurations, all possible this kind of uh, uh, two dimensions, embedding of this two dimensional surface in space time, then that essentially uh, uh, give rise to all kind of stream motions. Okay, so weighted by some string action. So the simplest way to write down the string action is a straightforward generation of this particle case. You say you just integrate over its area. So here is just the length of the string. Here is the area. But here we also need to include 
Uh, so here is the particle mass. So the generation of the particle mass is the say, so-called string tension. So T, which is normally written as in terms of two alpha prime. So you introduce a parameter, you introduce a dimensional parameter alpha prime to parameterize this T. And so this is a string tension. So this is mass per unit. String tension just mass per unit length. Okay. And uh, and this is normally called the uh, 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 Lambert-Gotto action. So Ng. So this is Lambert-Gotto action. Who first wrote it down? Okay, so this, so this dA is essentially just the area of the surface uh, uh, in the space time. Okay, it's it just straight generalization of the length of the trajectory. And uh, yeah, depend on the worries, depend on what kind of questions you are interested, then you try to extract those kind of physical answers from this, say, this part in the room. Okay. So any questions so far? Yes? Do we allow paths that contract the string to a point? Yeah. Yeah, I will show you. Okay. Yeah? So is that two time variable? No, single. No, sigma parameterize the string itself, and the tau, it's a parameterize the motion of the string along the, uh, uh, the motion of the string. But uh, this, the, there is a time variable in sigma, and uh, it's just a. No, no, tau is the time. Yeah. Tau is the internal time for the string, okay. and then there's a time in the in here in the x zero in the space time. Okay. So this can be considered as some kind of a proper time for the string, internal time for the string. Yeah, just like the uh, you parameterize the trajectory of the particle. Uh, 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 you have some tau to parameterize the trajectory of the particle. This is the same thing. Uh, but I mean, for any proper time, it isn't there is a, or itself is a four-dimensional space time. Why there is only like a one parameter of tau, which does not have this uh, four component? No, I don't understand what you are. Uh, no, there's only a single time. You have a particle, you have only a single time, right? No, do you agree here there's only tau here? Uh, no, here I have just have a line, I parameterize this line, I call it tau. Uh, okay, yeah. Here I have a two dimensional, here I have a, a string, and then each point on the string uh, moves like a particle, and then I parameterize by a tau. Okay. Yeah. It, it's the same thing. That's so much clear, yeah. 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 Yes? So, you go ahead. <laughs> uh, what's the metric on the wall sheet? Does that make sense to us? Is it like minus plus or? Of course, it makes sense. Uh, 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 of course, on the wall sheet, it should be a Lorenzian. Uh, 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 whatever is the uh, uh, metric on the uh, wall sheet is the, uh, uh, will be induced from the space time. OK, so, so it would be a minus plus. Yeah, uh, for example. Yeah. yeah, it's Lorenzian. Yeah. Yeah, you can also, yeah, uh, we can talk about, uh, yes? So one other question, so if that should be interpreted as proper time, if I have a string which is moving in some weird non-uniform way, how does it make sense to talk about the proper time of the string when like, you can imagine the different points on the string? Yeah, yeah, good point. So, so often you cannot talk about that. Uh, 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 and, uh, and, and this just gives you a heuristic picture. Because the in principle string can, can do highly non-classical motion. And then that is encoded, say, in integrating over all such kind of surfaces. Okay. And, uh, and some of them you cannot interpret it classically or semi-classically into this kind of picture. You uh, visualize it. So, so I will draw some pictures later, you will see. Yeah. Yes? Um, oh no, this might be a question like, without a good answer. But uh, what is the, I guess, why does the action take that form? What is that accomplishing physically? Or like, I guess maybe an easier example would be, um, up there in the first quantization approach. Um, yeah. How does that reproduce QFT? Um, you say why that uh, reproduce yeah. QFT? Yeah, how, how that reproduce QFT, of course, is a technical question, uh, um, which you have to calculate explicitly. And, uh, but the, the question is, why do we choose that? Uh, uh, the reason we choose that is the, uh, it's based on various principles. 
So first, uh, 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 first, that thing, whatever it is, sh should not determine, sh should not depend on how you choose this tau. Uh, 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 because you, you can parameterize your trajectory as any way you want. So that the L, so whatever this action should not depend on the parameterization. And also, uh, uh, this action should be uh, Lorentz invariant on the space, uh, and the Lorentz boost should be translation invariant, et cetera. And uh, with those conditions, then essentially, uh, 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 essentially uh, uniquely determined to be this form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, essentially uniquely determined to be this form. Yes? So I guess if you were doing a quantization of the bosonic string, like if you were deriving the field equations, would you use Nambugoto or would you use Polyakov? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, that's right. Uh, uh, if uh, you really quantize it, you actually don't use uh, uh, Lambugoto. Uh, uh, and I'm going to use it for the classical uh, uh, description. Yeah, uh, uh, I did not mention the other uh, uh, other forms. It's it just for our purpose, uh, current discussion is not essential. Yeah, yeah, indeed. When you quantize, you actually use a different form of this action. Any other questions? Good. So now, for example, yeah. So. Say how you uh, um, so depend on what kind of questions you are interested, in, and uh, and you you try to extract uh, try to extract them say from this kind of path integral, and of course this is a highly non-trivial questions and require say some kind of trial and error etc. So let me just uh, uh, tell you um, say if I have a Say, say if I want to calculate the vacuum process, say if I want to calculate the vacuum energy. OK, so, uh, so let me call this, this string. So, if I, uh, 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 so remember when we talk about large N gauge series, and if you want to calculate the vacuum energy, then you calculate the, you sum over all possible vacuum diagrams, et cetera, OK? You sum over all possible vacuum diagrams. And but suppose we, we want to calculate the vacuum energy in the string theory. And then you do the similar thing. You, you just do the, what do you want to do for, for the string. You say you sum over all closed 2D surfaces. OK? So the closed here is essential. So this is based on the intuition that when we, in the quantum field theory, when you sum over Feynman diagrams, and the Feynman diagrams heuristic can be considered as a particle trajectories, et cetera. And for the vacuum process, the, uh, 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 none of the, uh, 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 there's no external lags. So, so everything coming out of the vacuum then come back to the vacuum. So that's why, so if we want to calculate the vacuum energy in the string theory, and again, should correspond to the virtual stream motion. And again, the virtual stream motion should correspond to sum of all such kind of surfaces without any external lags. Uh, so, so should be closed surfaces, OK? Should be closed surfaces. So it's analog of the particle case. And uh, so as exactly as in the quantum field theory case, it's easier to do this using the Euclidean by going to the Euclidean signature. And uh, say, uh, say, go to the Euclidean signature. They're going to Euclidean signature. So essentially, uh, 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 analytic uh, so in, uh, instead of considering uh, a surface in the Lorentzian space time, you consider you analytic continue your space time, the full space time to the to the Euclidean signature, and then and then uh, uh, and then this just becomes some surface in some Euclidean space, and then this is just much easier mathematical object to deal with. Okay, so that's what you get, and if you have a string. And then you have this, OK? OK, uh, so now when you sum over all surfaces, now you have a choice. First, you can sum over the topology. So we talked about before, all two-dimensional surfaces, the topology is uh, classified by this genus. And then you can sum over surfaces with a given, uh, uh, it, so you can separate the sum into some over topology and, uh, and then some uh, services of each uh, of uh, uh, a given topology, given H. Okay? So this H is the genus. 
So essentially, we are just summing over all possible two-dimensional closed surfaces. OK? Is this point clear? This is absolutely the key point. And, uh, and with this minus S and G. OK? So now there's a very important mathematical trick. And, uh, uh, and this mathematical trick will, um, it can be justified rigorously, but I will not just put it here. I will just add it here. He said, no, just in physics, whenever you see a discrete sum like this, what do you do? Or in mathematics, whenever you see a discrete sum like this, what do you do? Hmm? Sorry? <laughs> exactly, you add the weight. So here I will add the weight here. So, uh, so here I'm summing over all topology, but I have, but in, but then I, but now I will add by hand a weight to weight different topology. So lambda is just some parameter. So lambda is just parameter I introduced by now, uh, uh, by hand, myself. OK, so this is just the weight. For different topology. So chi is the Euler number. So lambda is just some lambda. Uh, uh, so chi is the Euler number, 2 minus 2h. And the lambda. Just can be considered as some kind of chemical potential. Some kind of chemical potential, say for, top, uh, for topology. <laughs> OK, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, just like uh, in the system, say you have a conserved charge, then, you, then it's, when you add particles, uh, or, or, uh, different particle number, it, it, it's convenient to add uh, uh, a chemical potential, so lambda is like that. So, so even though I added it by hand now, even though I added it by hand here, but in string theory, actually, this is a rise completely natural from the string theory. Uh, 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 there's a rigorous way one can show how that arises, but I will not do it here. It's not important for our purpose. And I will also introduce a notation, say gs is equal to exponential lambda, OK? So now let's look at this, pro, uh, uh, now let's look at this summation. So here you sum over, so at h equal to 0, you sum over all surface with the topology of a sphere. And the weight is given by gs minus 2, which is expansion minus 2 lambda. OK? Yeah, because the chi, when h equal to 0, chi equal to 2. So this is just minus 2 lambda. And, uh, and so this is 1 over gs squared. OK? And then the, then the torus is h equal to 1. So this is just the gs to the power 0. It's all the 1. So if you have genus 2, so this would be g h equal to 2, then it would be gs squared. OK? So here is a remarkable fact. So here is a remarkable fact. Here's a remarkable fact.
is that sum over topology automatically automatically includes interaction of strings. Okay. In fact, this fully specifies string interactions. Okay. So let me just uh, elaborate on this statement. So, so we can see this statement from these sums here. Okay. So now let's look at the physical meaning of those diagrams. So uh, 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 let's first look at the sphere diagrams. So this, uh, suppose we draw a sphere. Okay. So what I'm describing to you is heuristic from physical perspective. Uh, 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 from uh, from physical perspective. So if you think about the sphere embedded in the space, so this is like. So if you think from, uh, say, imagine your time going up. Okay, imagine your time going up. So this is like you nucleate uh, the infinitesimal string at the tip of the sphere, and then, the, then this string propagates so that each time you have a string, and then at some future time, then, uh, then, then go back to the vacuum. Okay? And so you just have a string come in and come out. Uh, a string uh, come out from the vacuum and then go back. Uh, and the sphere just describes this kind of virtual process. Say, say you, uh, uh, you nucleate string and then, uh, uh, then, uh, then disappear again. OK? Say, nucleate string. String nucleation and then disappear. Into vacuum. OK? Yes? Because it's enough for my purpose now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not trying to give you the full string at theory at the moment. I'm just trying to give you the bit of string theory is enough to make that point. Say the say large n expansion is like a string theory. Yeah, yeah, because uh, uh, otherwise take the whole semester to reach the point. <laughs> So now, let's look at this torus diagram, because if you want to sum over all surfaces, then you have to sum over different topologies, then you have to sum over the torus. Then let's look at what torus diagram means. So let me draw the torus in a uh, slightly different way. OK? So the torus, again, if you try to view the time going up, then from here, again, you nucleate a single string. But now, at this time, then you actually have two strings. And then here, you have one string back again. OK? Then the torus actually describes such a virtual process. It's that like you nucleate a string from the vacuum. And then this string split into two, split into two string, and then these two string come back to join again to a single string, and then go to the vacuum. Okay, so so this is the uh, nucleation out of vacuum, and then here it splits. So here a single string splits into two string. And then here they join together, join back into a single string, and then here disappear into the vacuum. OK? 
Okay? So, so we find by including the torus diagram, you automatically include this kind of uh, 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 interaction that the string can split into two strings and, uh, and two strings can join into a single string. And essentially, you don't have choice. This is just determined by the topology. Okay, you don't have choice. It, it, it just once you write down this path integral, then then this uh, is fully determined. Okay, it's fully determined. And similarly, if you look at the two loop process, so you, you look at the string split, join, split, and join again. So the two-loop string, again, can be uh, 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 considered as uh, 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 such a such in the acting process. So now the key, so now if we compare the GS dependence of, of these diagrams, so, so this one, so each diagram compared to the earlier one, you increase by GS to the power square. But for each, whenever you include the genus, essentially effectively include such a splitting and the joining. So that means you can actually associate with each process to be a factor of G string. Okay? So for the sphere, you have, say from here, say, say if you normalize string, uh, a sphere to be GS minus 2. Then now, if you include, so essentially this weight, this weight which we added here, is to a weight for such a splitting and a, 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 a joining process. So each splitting and joining essentially give you a weight of G string, okay? Weight G string. So in some sense, we concluded that. So we concluded that so the basic stream interaction vertex is just a single string can join into two string or a two string or a single string can split into two string. or two string can join to a single string. And the weight for each process is given by G string. Okay. So, so that's effectively what this mathematical trick does. So effectively what this mathematical trick does is to assign a weight for each such a splitting process. Yes? So if you start the nucleation, so you drew it like this for the two loop thing. Yeah. But if you start the nucleation from the side rather than yeah. the bottom, right. then wouldn't it like split into three and then back into one? The, uh, uh, that's right. That's uh, you. Uh, yeah, it's uh, because of the topology. You you can split in in arbitrary way, and this get, this just tells you using this basic vertex then. Then for fixed parameterization, uh, 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 yeah, just this vertex is already enough, okay. and you can uh, indeed it's a very good question. You can try to uh, uh, a slice uh, at the diagonal in arbitrary way, then that may give you some arbitrary other things. Uh, then that's fine, uh, and then you can assign weight for some uh, uh, some other vertices, but but they will be all consistent with these fundamental vertices. So, so essentially, this GS, which I called to be exchange lambda, is essentially the coupling for the string. Okay. It essentially determines the strength of the string interactions. Yeah. Our choice of weight is not unique, right? I mean, we could do something ugly like p to the power chi square, and then things would be bad. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, indeed, indeed, yeah. Uh, 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 so, so here, so here is the simplest choice, and it's a choice which you can, uh, um, um, yeah, yeah. So, so this is the simplest choice you can put, 
And this is a choice which will also arise if you properly quantize string theory. And indeed, you can write down some other string theory uh, uh, with a different power. Uh, it might be possible. Yeah, uh, I mean, just as a mathematical, uh, say at the mathematical level, nothing prevents you to add some arbitrary function of chi. And, uh, and this is just the simplest way to do it. And this is the way which arises out of string theory. Yeah, uh, uh, this is, so this process is not arbitrary. It's something which you can derive from string theory. Uh, it, it, just here, I will not go through the whole thing. Any other questions? Um, do we have an extra minus sign in the x No. Oh, because chi goes more negative as h increases? Yeah. The exponent becomes larger and larger for it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because the, yeah, I can take g to be small. Yeah, yeah, the only thing is I'm, uh, uh, I want to be consistent with this power. So now here is the key. So now let's look at the external strings. So here, at the beginning, I was looking at the, uh, um, I think I was looking at the vacuum process. There was nothing, just everything come out of the vacuum. But you can also consider, say, some process, say you start with two strings. Then you scatter them together, you get two strings back. So you can also consider such kind of strings. So you started with actually two initial strings. And then through some complicated interaction, then you have some two strings back. Okay? So for example, this would be such kind of process. Again, uh, 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 anything can happen in between. I have two initial strings, two initial strings, but I have two fellow strings come out. Okay. So this would be some kind of surfaces. So this would correspond to you have to sum of all possible f surfaces with four external string. Uh, 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 say two coming from minus infinity and two come from t equal to plus two come out at t plus infinity. Okay. And again, you need to sum over all possible topology in between. Say you you you, you sum over sphere in between. Yeah, let me just uh, 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 save time, draw it quickly. So you can sum over all spheres in between, some spheres. Or you sum over torus. Okay. But now if you do this weight according to this rule, okay, now if you do the weight according to this rule, something changed. Because the again, again we want to sum of all possible surfaces with the same rule as you do for the vacuum. But now there's something important that changes. He said, this kind of surfaces, so these are the surfaces with the boundaries. So you want to start with two, in, two, initial, external, uh, two initial strings and two final strings. So each initial string introduces a boundary. So now you have two, four different boundaries. So you have four boundaries. And so, so when you introduce boundaries into a two-dimensional surfaces, then the Euler number changes. So some of you already uh, may know this from high school. 2 minus h and the minus n. And n is the number of boundaries. OK, number of boundaries. And which is the same as the number of, ex number of external strings. Number of external strings. OK. So now if you use this rule, so now for the n-string scattering, for n-string scattering, so let me call this n, a n, 
Then you will, again, sum over all genesis. So now this weight, when I translate into GS, become m minus 2 minus 2h, a plus 2h. OK, so now, because of this n, so I have additional uh, a power of gs to the power n. Say, say I can write as fn h, OK? So, so if you look at the sum, so if you look at this sum, so if you look at this sum, so this is gs to the power n minus 2 come from the sp sphere, sphere surface, uh, spherical surfaces, uh, which can also be considered as a tree level from the string point of view, because the string just come out and the nucleate. And then the next order is gs to the gsn, then this is torus topology. So this may be considered some kind of one loop process. And uh, gs n plus 2, so this is genus 2, etc. OK? So now, let's compare with this. So, so, so this also including the vacuum. For the vacuum, you just set n equal to 0. OK, just set n equal to 0. So now we see a exactly parallel with what we see in the large and gauge series. In both cases, you have summing over topology. And in both cases, you have summing, you have this expansion. And uh, so, so identical. Mathematical structure with large n expansion in particular G string now corresponding to just one of n. And these external strings, say if you have some just corresponding to the glue balls, what we call the glue balls, so this kind of uh, single trace operators, and the sum of a string of a string worksheet of, say, topology of genus H is then a, a map to, say, some of the Feynman diagrams of genus H. Yeah, so you see uh, say exactly parallel mathematical structure between the two. So the question is whether is this an accident or this is something deep, OK? I think I'm running out of time. Um, Yeah. OK, maybe I will stop here. Oh, you don't want to stop? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Only one and a half pages left. Um, OK. Yeah, let me just say a few words. Let me say a few words. If you look at these two sums, this sum. And this sum, oh, 
Yeah, let me call this f n so that you add uh, the distinction. Let me call this f. So that f. So if you look at these two sums, so the question is, can you really physically identify these two? OK? Yeah, just say, uh, uh, let me just say a couple of words. Say f and h, which appear in the correlation functions, essentially just sum over five uh, sum over Feynman diagrams. of genus H, and this is the, uh, just the Feynman diagrams, uh, 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 the expression for the Feynman diagrams. And this one, this FH, FNH, so this is sum over this is path integral, say minus S and G of genus H surfaces. So now remember, so now remember one thing we said before, is that each Feynman diagram, each Feynman diagram can be considered as a partition of a 2D surface. OK? So now, if you sum over all possible Feynman diagrams, so you can also think of it geometrically as sum over all possible triangulations of a surface. Triangulations of a surface. So this, uh, uh, this kind of uh, 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 partition is essentially just a triangulation of the surface. It's divided into different parts. And with some amplitude, uh, with, with some weight. So some of all possible triangulation of the surface, of course, this is precisely just a discrete form of summing over all, surf summing over all surfaces. So this is just a, described for, a discrete sum of summing over all surfaces. And so, so this really identifies these two are essentially the same object. So when you're summing over diagrams, you are actually summing in secretly actually summing over all possible embeddings of some surfaces in space time. And the precise nature of that surface, of course, depends on uh, 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 the diagram itself. Diagram itself. So this really tells you that the large N expansion is really just a string theory. Okay, it's really just a string theory. And the, but from here, you cannot immediately tell what kind of string theory is this, because from Feynman diagram itself, so this Lambo Goto action, which I, I wrote earlier, corresponding to your map from some surface, embedding of some surface in some space time. And that space time can be some arbitrary space time, et cetera. For a different space time, of course, you get a different action. So the question is, what does this correspond to? So I give you a set of, uh, I give you a field series, and you have those Feynman diagrams. And what Feynman, what, uh, and for each Feynman diagram, you can write down expression for them. Just whether this really corresponding to, say, some geometric action, the Feynman diagram, whether it really corresponding to some geometric action uh, describing the motion of some surface in some space time. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so let me just stop here.